Nepal's prehistory is steeped in myth and legend but the tales from their early days hold the keys to understanding the present. In prehistory, it is believed that a Hindu sage named Naimini who meditated in Tiku made Bhumi Gopta a king. The king became not only the founder of Gopal dynasty but also the first king of Nepal. It is believed that the word Nepal means the country looked after by, nay. Gopal dynasty ruled in Nepal for 521 years and they were called Gopal because they used to rear cows. After Gopal dynasty came Abhir dynasty, also known as Mahipal. Abhir used to rear buffaloes. Via Singh of Abhir dynasty who is believed to have come from South India took over the power from Jitgupta of Gopal dynasty. They ruled for more than 100 years. Girat dynasty took power by defeating the last king of Abhir dynasty. Long before the modern nation of Nepal came into being, the mountain kingdom of Nepal occupied the region now known as the Kathmandu Valley. Between 900 BC to AD 200, it was the home of the Kirats, the first recorded rulers of Nepal, who are thought to have migrated to Nepal from the east. They are the forebears of Limbu, Rai, Sonwar, Yaka and other mountain tribes. The Kirats ruled for about 1000 years and were ruled by a total of 28 kings during that time. The first and best remembered king was Yelamba. And, this is the picture of King Ilimba in war outfit. He extended his kingdom as far as the Tista River in the east and the Tursale in the west. It is said that during the Battle of Mahabharat, Ilimba went to witness the battle with a view to take the side of the losing party. Krishna, knowing the intention of Ilimba and the strength and unity of the key rats, thought that the war would be unnecessarily prolonged if Yelimba sided with the Kauravs. So, by a clever stroke of diplomacy, Krishna cut off Yelimba's head. During the region of 7th Kirats King Jaitdasti, Gautam Buddha visited the Nepal Valley along with his disciples. He visited the shrines of Soyampo and Gudswari, and preached his doctrine. The Kirats did not embrace Buddhism but, they made Buddha welcome and, to this day, Buddhism continues to flourish in Nepal. The Kirats dynasty came to an end around 200 AD when what began as a gradual migration of people from the south, from what is now India, became an invasion force that pushed the Kirats out of the Kathmandu Valley up into East Nepal. The incoming forces erased all but a few traces of the once mighty Kirats dynasty and to this day many Kirats remain unaware of their rich and proud heritage. These Kirats areas now include Okladonga, Solukumbu, Kotang, Bojpur, Sankwasava, Taplazung, Panchatia, Dankuta, Ilam, Udayapur, Dolaka, Ramichap, and part of Morang, Sonsari and Japa districts. In this map, the orange region, where most key rats settled, this area right here, they have undergone many changes since then, however, they are still found to have protected the unique languages and cultural heritage. Gasti was the last key rats king, he was defeated by the Soma king, Nemesa, and thus key rats rule comes to an end. Nemesa becomes the first king of the Soma period. The Soma had established a principality in the west, while the Kirats kings were ruling over the Nepal Valley. The Soma kings attacked Nepal many times during the reign of Patoka the second last ruler of Kirats but they could not defeat him. The last Kirats king, Gasti, was comparatively weak, so he was defeated by Nemesa, who became the first Soma king of Nepal in AD 205. Nemesa made a gold-plated roof for the temple of Pashupatinath during his time. Vaskavarma was the fifth and last Soma king to rule over Nepal. During the time of Gautam Buddha, the kings of the Lechavi dynasty were ruling over Vaisali, modern Bihar in India. When the kings of the Kushan Empire became powerful in India, the Lechavi migrated to Nepal. 
the Lechavi invaded Nepal from northern India and overthrew the declining Soma dynasty that briefly succeeded the Kirats. They reimposed Hinduism and the caste system, which continues to this day. The Lechavi period was a golden age of Nepali art and architecture and they are credited with building some of Kathmandu's great landmarks such as the Chagu Naran temple of Visnu was said to be built by Mandev. He minted coins in his name for the first time in the history of Nepal and named them Mananka. The majestic Buddhist stupas at Baudanath and Soyambhunath was built during this period. At the death of Shiva Deva, one of the ruler in Lechavi period, in 605 AD, and Suvarma became the sole sovereign and adopted the title of king. He belonged to the Thakori clan, and thus he established the Thakori dynasty in Nepal. He was a true servant of the people without any political bias. According to some inscriptions, King Shiva Deva used to say that Ansu Verma was a man of universal fame and he always destroyed his enemies by his heroic nature. During the reign of Ansu Verma, Harshaw Verdhana of India and Srung Sangampo of Tibet were trying to extend their territories, keeping Harshaw Verdhana at arm's length. He made a matrimonial alliance with Tibet. He gave his daughter Brikuti in marriage to the Tibetan king Srung Sangampo. He also gave his sister Bogadevi in marriage to an Indian king Shersen. With all this political strategy and far-sightedness, and Suvarma maintained the sovereignty and independence of the country. It was during his period that Nepal and Tibet developed close relationship and he is the one who established the trade routes. The ruling period of Ansuvarma is known as the Golden Age in the history of Nepal. The system of declaring prince was also started from his period. He built a palace called Kilashkat. And, this is the statue of Ansuvarma in China Museum. Please see the part 2 for rest of this video. Thank you for watching.